Red Nation blogger, back with another video. It's been a while. I thought a lot before I did this video because I saw the Blazers game and I saw the San Antonio Spurs game and I didn't want to be repetitive. I didn't want to be coming on here talking about the same things, loss after loss, win after win, seeing the same problem, seeing the same issue. So I thought, you know what? Let me give it a break. Let me let it breathe for a little while. And then I'll come back with some fresh content depending on how these last two games go, i.e. the Blazers and the Spurs. And I've come to a conclusion. That conclusion is Steven Silas might need to be on the hot seat, man. It might be time for Steven Silas to be on the hot seat. With all due respect, I know that he was dealt a bad hand. I understand this. But at the end of the day, at some point, there has to be improvement within the team. And I know a lot of people want to say, well, individually, these guys have taken steps. But as a team, have they really taken that next step? And I understand I'm the guy that came on here and I made a video in the offseason saying, hey, this is the last season. Let's do what it takes to get Victor Wimbenyama. But at the same time, I don't want to see the same mistakes made over and over and over again. So I'm looking at... Steven Silas's first season as a Houston Rockets head coach. I understand that was a disaster of a season. It was COVID still at a rampant high level. Look at this. The Rockets offensive rating that season ranked 27th in the NBA. Their defensive rating ranked 27th in the NBA. And forgive me, I'm looking it up right now. So I look up their net rating and their net rating was negative 7.4. So that was just a really, really bad, bad season. Fast forward to Jalen Green's rookie season. The Rockets, they upgrade. They improve one spot, 26th ranked offense in the NBA. Bottom, last in the NBA in defensive rating. And the net rating, again, I'm going to look it up, so please forgive me. 29th, negative 8.3. So they actually, like, decreased. They didn't improve, they deproved, for lack of a better word. Fast forward to this season, Jabari Smith, Tari Eason, Tata Washington. The Rockets are 27th once again in offensive rating. They're 27th once again in defensive rating. And they're 27th once again at negative 6.1 in net rating. I may have been off on the defensive rating. I'm not sure. But... The bottom of the league. Where is the improvement? And one of the things that really pissed me off last year with Steven Silas was a quote that I saw. It was a quote that said, Singoon, I think, had a game. He played like five or seven minutes. Something like it was something crazy. And Steven Silas said, Well, Daniel Thice was playing so well that I, I forgot to put Sengun back in, which was blasphemous. At that point, that was such a blasphemous statement because Daniel Thice had nowhere near the game. If I would, I could go look up this box score right now. I feel like doing it, but I'm not. But if I could look up this game, Daniel Thice was not tearing it up. I think they lost that game. It, it, was, it was a winnable game that they lost because he de decided to play Daniel Thice, Christian Wood, and Jay Sean Tate in a starting lineup. And he did this for like 25 games. And it took a long time before he moved Christian Wood to the five, something that the Rockets fans and just people in the basketball community have been clamoring for because we understood what it did for your spacing issues. We understood that the double big lineup was not going to work, especially if you plan on playing also Jay Sean Tate at the three. So I say all that to say, Steven Silas has to be on the hot seat. I mean, his seat has to be warming up this season. They drafted Tata Washington in the first round. I understand he's a rookie. I understand Deshaun Nix kind of sort of is also a rookie. But Tata Washington has shown you in a small span what he can do with that backup point guard position. And yet, he doesn't get a lot of burn outside of garbage time. I think he's gotten like two games this season with legitimate minutes or maybe three. I didn't really watch a lot of the Spurs game. I saw it. I tuned in. I saw the energy that the Rockets were giving, and I didn't like it. I cut it off. I couldn't watch it. I thought that after that San Antonio loss that this team had turned a corner. I thought that after they lost to San Antonio at San Antonio that this team had turned a corner. 
I thought that this team had had a conversation. They had a come to Jesus moment, for lack of a better word. And they all got in each other's faces and took accountability. And that was why they started turning things around on the homestand. When they beat Milwaukee, when they beat the Sixers, when they started looking like a competent team that actually cared and was turning the corner. Jabari starts playing better. But now that they have reverted back to their same ways. And I get it. I saw a graphic uh, on Twitter uh, I forgot the, the Twitter user's name that posted it. But it said, I think the Rockets by far lead the league. 81% of our players are 22 or 23 and under. So that has a lot to do with it. But as, at a certain point, you have to hold guys accountable as a head coach. And the numbers that I just gave you from the first season of Silas, from the sophomore season of Silas, and now in his third year, where why, why should he maintain his job? Why should he maintain job security? Unless... The plan is to tank for Victor Wimbenyama. Unless the plan is to tank for Victor Wimbenyama, I don't understand why Silas has such job security. Tari Eason, just Tari Eason, Usman Garuba, uh, uh, like I said, Tata Washington. These are guys that should always be getting minutes. Don't get me started on Kevin Porter Jr., man. I, I don't want to be repetitive. I don't want to be repetitive, and I don't want people to feel like I'm attacking this young man because I'm not. But we know what he is, and a point guard he is not. And I don't want a Ray John Rondo. I don't want a Ricky Rubio. Can you be Darren Williams? Can you be James Harden? Can you be Trey Young? Can you be a player that knows how to balance the scoring and the passing? Can you be a player like that? Those guys, if you are going to get into your scoring bag, I need 24, 25, 26, 27 points per game. Not 18, 16, and five turnovers and four assists. I can't do it. On 37% shooting, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I know I, I even me saying this is adamant as I'm saying it. I will give Kevin Porter Jr. this season to play it out. I want them to do it because what alternative have we have? We're not going to sign a free agent point guard because that's we're not trying to make the playoffs. We're not going to make the playoffs. It's just frustrating to watch. I mean, versus San Antonio, they looked out of sorts. They didn't look like they were prepared to play. And Jalen Green made a comment about, well, versus Portland, we kind of just reverted to street ball. Well, what the hell did you guys do in Houston uh, uh, versus San Antonio? And where's the head coach? And this is what I said. I made a video, um, I think, after the Milwaukee win or after the Philly win. It was one of those wins. I made a video that said, John Lucas, this team looks like they play differently for John Lucas than they do Steven Silas. And this goes back to the preseason. Yes, I understand it's the preseason. However, they just look to have a different type of energy. They look to they they seem like they respond better to John Lucas on the sideline versus Steven Silas on the sideline. I don't want to get too deep into numbers. I don't want to get too deep into all of these other things. But Silas seat has to be warm at some point, man, because this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I'm okay with losing. You got to respond, man. You got to respond. I think they got blew out by double digits by the Spurs at home. Jalen Green shot 20-something percent from the field. Is he hurt? If he's hurt, he needs to be resting, not playing through it. But I know he probably wants to play through it. But I would rather him sit because I want him to perform at the best of his ability, not putting out this bullshit that he is right now. Anyways, that's all I have. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Is Steven Silas on the hot seat? Is he not? Do you think he should be back next season? Or do you think we should go in another direction? As always, thank you for watching. Red Nation Blogger, out.